Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about six rules to live by as a video editor. So before we begin the video, I'd kindly like to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you're not yet, leave a like below, and follow me on social media at Justin Odisho to stay in touch with me where I'm most active. So getting into this list, and they're in no particular order, number one is that a cut and a fade will be the only two transitions that will serve you best about 80% of the time. They're the best transitions. A simple cut is probably the most versatile. If you only ever had to have one transition in your pocket, make it a cut. You can do so much with them. It's kind of like the default transition. It's just what happens when one clip moves into the next. You know, That's a cut. And you can do so many things with cuts as well. You can jump cut in between different places of the same clip. You can cut to the beat. You can cut away. You can match cut. You can do all types of different things. Fades are also awesome as well. You can fade in. You can fade out. You can fade to black. You can cross fade between two clips. That's kind of like the default transition in Premiere and many other programs is the cross dissolve another classic but basically my point is that those two if you just keep those two in your pocket they will serve you well for 80 percent of your transition needs and cases and then you always have the fun ones and the creative ones that you might want to throw in perhaps if you're doing some sort of crazy music video or fun type of video where you need cool and flashy transitions moving on to number two and this is a random specific practical one is that if you suck at text, if text is not your strong point, then it's hard to go wrong with just some simple, solid, clean font in the middle. Don't get too fancy. Don't throw on some wing dings on there. Just maybe keep it simple with a solid, clean font like Futura. Maybe you can go all caps with it. A solid color like white usually works well. Keeping it in the center is also an easy placement to go with. And one thing I've noticed is either go kind of relatively small and balanced compared to the objects in the frame, or some people like to go really large and do it that way. Both are cool styles of titles, hard to mess up. You can keep it very simple. Don't try to introduce the text in some crazy animation and transition. Just cut it in, cut it out, maybe fade it in, fade it out, going back to point number one, and you can have a simple text title introduction to whatever your video is. Speaking of the possibility of maybe even no text altogether, number three is that less is more. Simplicity is key to keeping your video timeless. What can you take away from the clips? What is there that can be cut that's unnecessary? unnecessary lengths of time or just unnecessary clips in general. What you need to remember about video editing is as the editor, it's up to your job to kind of almost be invisible in the way. You want to tell the best story possible, but let the original content shine through. You ever notice in really old movies, if there's a cheesy special effect done, it instantly dates the movie and you think, oh, look at that 1980s effect. This movie was clearly shot in 1988 or whatever. That same thing can probably be applied to certain things today. You might generate some crazy cool lightning that comes built in in Premiere Pro 2017, and it could look so realistic and awesome, but maybe in 2025, people are going to look back at this and be like, oh, look at that stock lightning that came in those old versions of Premiere. It looks so cheesy. Or perhaps look at that word art style that came pre-installed in those versions. That's so cheesy. This goes back to clean, simple text. Less is more in a way. That's not to say that certain videos can look good with a very chaotic and flashy style of editing, but still you want to make sure every edit that you do has a purpose and that you're cutting the video in a way that it packages everything together nicely and lets the original content shine through. So there's so much that can go into that, but moving on to number four, this kind of relates to editing and making sure you like the overall edit is if you're editing a long video and you're wondering, you know, what should stay in there? What should I take out? 
what is good. One thing to do, and this works with almost any medium of creating stuff, if you're an artist of any kind, is take a step away, maybe sleep on it, come back to it the next day with fresh eyes, and then watch your whole project over from start to finish, and you can get a whole feel of how the entire project is looking, which parts don't make sense to you anymore, you don't, don't really remember what you were thinking the day before when you made it, and the more times you watch over the draft from start to finish all the way through, you can start to get an idea of what feels cohesive in there, and slowly you can keep coming back to it with fresh eyes and a fresh perspective, and it'll allow you to exercise better editing and become a better editor. This is also where some people like to get the opinion of others and get get a friend or another person whose opinion you trust because they can act as a set of fresh eyes because you've obviously been looking at this for so long, editing it for hours on end, and you probably are hearing the song the same way you think that you're editing to the right moment in the beat, but maybe if you come back to it, you decide that you should be editing to a different piece of the audio. So just little things like that. If you ever notice uh, looking back on old projects that you've done or just looking back on any type of art in general, some things age like wine, maybe music, films, whatever, and they just seem to be timeless. They never get old and they actually get better the older they get. And some things are a little bit trendy in the moment, they sound good in the moment, and they just don't really sound good anymore five years later. And that's because you've had time to let it sit and hear it with fresh eyes and in context. So consider that with all the other points, and now we'll move on to number five, is that not everything can be fixed in editing. Uh, One point in particular that I wrote down for this point is that lighting is very important. Lighting is so important, I'll repeat it over. Lighting is everything, it's what goes into a camera's sensor in the first place. It's what a camera sensor captures light. It's how you get the image. And so sometimes if you have a really dark clip, I'll have people who ask me, how can I fix this clip? It's really noisy, or there was a lot of ISO, or maybe they shot it in a weird cropped way, and it's just kind of hard to fix. Some things are not really fixable in post. Like if the whole thing is super noisy and high ISO because it was shot really dark at night, you might be able to get creative and utilize it in some sort of interesting way that leans into it as a strength rather than a weakness. However, remember if you do it right in camera, editing is there for you to chop it all up and present it and package it well. So. Just remember that lighting is very important. Sounds important too. Many other, keeping a steady hand. Many other things are important. Finally, moving on to rule number six, and this kind of isn't even a rule, it's like an anti-rule, is that all of these rules are meant to be broken. You can break them once you know them, and you'll know, okay, well, I know cut and a fade is the best transition, but maybe in this case you wanna do something creative, or, You know that simple text usually works well, but you've done the research in the typography study and you want to do a cool red font in the corner or something. Be careful, remember, you have to know the rules to break them because usually if you're just, I mean, you can break rules and it might still turn out good, but usually if you're breaking rules that you don't even know that you're breaking, that might be where it doesn't look as good. So, and don't even listen to what I just said. Everything is subjective. Certain things are objective. Anyways, you get how ironic this rule can get. Basically, take what I say, try to apply them as principles where it fits for you, and then you can use your own creative instinct and eye and tweak and break things where you want because you want to do things a certain way. And maybe I don't know that. So these rules don't know what you're trying to do. Overall, those are six video editing rules to live by. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet, and I'd really appreciate if you follow me on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, at Justin Show. It's the best place to reach out to me, connect, stay in touch, and all that. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.